Thanks, Marilyn. Good morning, everybody. So today it's one of those where two or three are gathered type of days. We have a lot of people traveling, um, at least five by my count, and a few other people that are not traveling but are unable to be with us this morning, but it doesn't matter because, like I said, where two or three are gathered there, the Spirit of the Lord is as well. So I want to welcome you all. It's good to see everybody. Um, I'll draw your attention to the announcements in the bulletin, and then I've got a few more that I want to add. First of all, um, Sue Smith went home from the hospital yesterday, which we are very grateful for. Um, I didn't get a chance to go see her because my allergies were kicking up. At least I thought it was my allergies. It could be a cold, but it's what it is, and I didn't want to. I didn't want to make her worse than she already is, so I stayed home. Um, but. She is home, her daughter Misty came and is with her, and so she's getting care, and that's a good thing. Uh, so a few things going on. Um, we've resumed the Thursday night social at five o'clock out in the backyard. That's basically a beer and brats type of thing. Bring your favorite beverage, bring some brats to cook over the fire, and just come out and hang out with us. It's been a great experience while we were able to do that. And I want to thank Chris because for one of the, I came in yesterday morning and saw the bulletin board and just laughed. And so, but I, I want to thank you because, I want to thank Chris because you do this without anybody telling you or asking you. And it's just wonderful to see the decorations on that board. So thank you for that, Chris. You'll notice in your bulletin that we've got a different response to the um, morning offering, so just make a note of that. Page number is, is there at 647. And then also Tuesday night, um, for the Tuesday night Bible study, I will not be here because I need to uh, be in Bancroft for the Bancroft Fish Fry. This is all part of my effort to get out and be a presence in the community. So Nakana Gentry will be leading the Bible study on Tuesday. So we're, I'm sure that will be a wonderful experience for you all. And okay, one more, a couple more. Sorry for the for the length of announcements. On the 26th of June, uh, two weeks from today, the Malad con congregation will be celebrating their 140th anniversary, and they're having a special service at 5 p.m. that evening to celebrate, and we're all invited for that, so hopefully some of y'all will be able to get down there. I plan on stopping by on my way home from General Assembly, so um, it'll be nice if, if some of us could go and support that. And then, Bob, I'm going to ask you to talk a little bit about the annual, my annual review. Mm -hmm. I was over here with bated breath. <laughs> well, there you go. It's all yours. <laughs> Well, if you could believe it, it would have been nice to have a little larger audience here. You can announce it next week, too. You can announce it next week, too. <laughs> but Pastor Nathan has been here almost one year now. And even though we are, are not uh, totally obligated to give our thoughts on, on this almost past year, with our new pastor. Uh, the session would like to get some feedback from everybody that has been here about, you'll, you'll see on, on this very short, it's, it's one page, but it's very short. Uh, we just wanted to get feedback from you. So uh, you can, there's places where you can write special comments and things like that. and. I will aggregate all of that data and then we will, the session and Pastor Nathan and the Ministerial Relations Committee at Presbytery will all, all share in, in that information. So uh, I sent an email to everybody that had an, an email address, uh, except for, for Gary. <laughs> and then, anyway, if if you uh, want to print out the form at home and fill it out and then bring it uh, back to the church 
Uh, next Sunday would be great if I could have it by then. But give the forms either directly to me or to one of the session members who will, will get it to me. So I, I made a whole bunch of, of hard copies. If you don't want to print out, uh, print it out yourself or, you know, whatever. But anyway, uh, who would like to have uh, a copy? Okay. Well, I'm just going to pass these out right now if you don't mind. No. While Bob's doing that, I will reiterate um, my request that, that these come back to the session and not to me. So um, I don't want to see anything until we do the aggregate um, thing. So, um, so I would appreciate that. And if you are a member of session, I know we have a couple of, he of you here. Uh, they've already done their bit. They've already had their crack at me. So, it's, so the session members do not have to fill this out um, because they, they did the six month review. So this is only for congregational members. So just a reminder. Are there any other announcements uh, that I may have missed? All right, let's take a moment of silence to prepare our hearts and minds to worship Almighty God. We gather to worship the triune God, creator, savior, and sustainer. We enter into God's house with shouts of joy, praising our holy God. Please join in hymn number 288, Spirit of the Living God. One God in three persons. We behold in the splendor of your creation, your majesty and our responsibility. We behold in the face of Jesus Christ, your divinity and, your, uh, and our humanity. We behold in the spirit of truth, your glory and our calling. Bound to you forever, we will ever praise your name. Blessed are you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So we have kids, so we're going to do a kids time, and I'm going to be lazy and I'm going to sit down with y'all here. There we go. So, who do you think God is? Um, the one that created us in the world. Very good. Very good. What do you think God looks like? Um, we don't know for sure. That's right. We don't. And you know why? Because nobody's seen God's face, right? Nobody but Jesus Christ has seen God. So we don't know what God looks like. But you know what? We may not know what God looks like, but what do you think God wants us to do? Even though we don't know what we've seen, never, even though we've never seen Him. Make a good news. Sorry, say it again. You can both. Be a good person. Yes. And make good news. Excellent. You guys are good. Wow. I'm impressed. That's right. God calls us to be good people. Even though, we, even though we've never seen God, we are, we are being called to follow what God teaches us, right? All the time. So, do you think, like, like Miss Marilyn was saying last week, do you think it's important? Do you think God's calling us to love our, our neighbors? Yes. You think that's part of being a good person? Yeah. Me too. So great. That's wonderful. Let's pray. Holy God, we are grateful to be created in your image. And while we have never seen your face, we feel your presence with us every day. Guide us and help us to be good people, loving you and loving our neighbors. And we pray these things in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Thank you, guys. Like I said, I'm really impressed.
got shadow, I think you go blind. Well, that's a possibility. You never know, right? <laughs> Please stand and join us in our opening hymn number 288. I'm sorry, not 288. Number one, holy, holy, holy. And because it's Trinity Sunday, I'm going to invite you to turn to page 34 in the front of your hymnals as we, can, as we profess the faith of the Universal Church through the Nicene Creed. Please join me. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Triune God, though we are made in your image, we confess that we often reject the light of brutality, equality, and unity which you call to us. Instead of living in equality, justice, and respect, we devise ways to elevate ourselves and others. We are allowed differences to divide us and lead to brokenness. Forgive us, holy God, restore in us and in our life. We divine image you intent. We pray to be one with you, one one another, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the peace we have through our Lord Jesus Christ and by the power of the Holy Spirit, we have been set free from our sins. Thanks be to God. And as we have reconciled with God, let us reconcile with one another through a sharing of Christ's peace. The peace of the Lord be with you all. We come now to our time of prayer, a chance for each of us to share our joys, our concerns with each other as we bring those concerns and those joys uh, to Almighty God. So I'll ask if there are any prayer concerns that we need to be aware of from the congregation. Okay. I will ask for uh, two. One is a joy. My dad turns 85 tomorrow, and so uh, even though they're not in the best of health, they, are, they seem to be um, 
happy. And so I want to give praise and thanks to God for 85 years of my father being around. And then I'll ask for, a, for prayers for my brother-in-law. Um, Adam had to deal with two fatalities in the county this week, both on the same day. And it about, it, it about undid him, actually. It was very... Uh, um, one was a uh, drunk driver who rolled near Bailey Creek, and then the other one was, had an ATV uh, roll and fall on him. So it was not a good week for my brother-in-law or the sheriff's office. Um, so I asked prayers, particularly for Adam, but also for his staff as they, as they continue to deal with those investigations. If, yeah, Donna. I'd like to ask for prayer for my son in Castle Rock, Colorado. He's losing spinal fluid in his mm. ear. And Tuesday, they're going to go in and do a surgery, hopefully to repair and find the solution to that. What's his name? Rob. Rob, Rob thank Rob you. Adams. Thank you. That's, thank you for letting us know so we can pray for him. If there are no others, let's go to God in prayer. Holy God, we are honored to be able to worship you today. We are grateful for the beautiful day and the warm weather and the privilege that we have to worship you however we see fit. We know that that is not an option for so many people in our world. And we cannot say thank you enough for what we enjoy, the freedom we enjoy in this country. We come today knowing that you are Lord of all and you hear our prayers, whether they are spoken aloud or not. We know that you answer prayers and we are grateful to be able to lift our joys, our concerns to you. And we pray these prayers saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we pray for Jim and Sue. We pray for Aaron Huntziker. We pray for Dagmar, Maisie, Bob, Chris Gentry, Julie, and Brandy Lindstrom. You, God, know why everyone is on our list and why we lift up prayers for them. And so we pray, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to lift up Sheldon Maine, Ken Lund, Tammy's sister Deborah, Kathy Robinson, Janice Cousin, and Alicia Price. And we pray, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift up Haley Curtis, Billy Joe Skinner, Steve Landyke, and Ross and Linda Walker. And we pray, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we lift up Rossi, Dixie Ledbetter, Jay Lish, McKay Hansen, and Damian Henderson. And we pray, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to lift up the Belize mission. Victims of violence and disaster, our country and its leaders, all communities dealing with gun violence, the people of Ukraine, and we pray for peace in our homes, in our communities and the world. And we pray saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And God, we take a moment of silence to lift up those prayer concerns that we hold with, so deeply with ourselves and are unable to speak aloud. And all of these things we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand and join us in hymn number 175, Seek Ye First. Our first scripture reading comes from Proverbs 8, 1 through 4. Does not wisdom call and understanding raise her voice? On the heights beside the way, at the crossroads she takes her stand. Beside the gates in front of the town, at the entrance of the portals she cries out. To you, O people, I call, and my cry is to all who live. Our second reading comes from Psalms 8. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have founded a bulwark because of your foes, to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are humans that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the fields, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Our third reading this morning comes from John chapter 16, verses 12 through 15. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. Folks, these readings are God's word for God's people and we respond by saying, thanks be to God. So I'm going to apologize first of all. I don't know if it's allergies or if I'm catching a cold, and sorry if I hug you all and you get sick, but that's bad. Um, I was telling Chris this morning before worship that I feel like I'm sounding like Snuffleupagus from Sesame Street, so I do apologize up front for the sniffling. So as a kid, I was a voracious reader, actually I still am. And I'm fond of all sorts of literary genres. Horror novels, Stephen King's a personal favorite. Historical biographies, if I hadn't become a pastor, I would have been a history professor. And my all-time favorite, mystery novels. Sherlock Holmes was my hero growing up. And at one point, I wanted to be just like him. Now, I don't know if it was the pipe or the deerstalker hat, or the fact that Sherlock could see things and make connections that us mere mortals simply can't wrap our minds around. Okay, it probably wasn't the hat. Even as a youngster, I always thought that hat looked pretty ridiculous. Regardless, for a period of time, I just knew that I wanted to be Sherlock Holmes. That was, of course, when I wasn't lining up my sister's dolls and preaching at them. So, yeah, I was a weird little kid. There's no doubt about that. When I looked at today's reading, I groaned a bit, as this is one of those texts that is mysterious and on the surface seems to be impenet impenetrable and difficult to understand. And while I do love a good mystery, the whole reading from John this morning seems way beyond my admittedly limited ability to comprehend 
And honestly, it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I'm not sure that even the great Sherlock Holmes could have unraveled this particular mystery. The whole thing is compounded, of course, by the fact that the writer of John tended to use metaphoric language and talked in circles instead of just plainly telling us what was going on. Way to go, John. Nice job making this creature's life more difficult than it absolutely needs to be. Thanks. There was a post going around on Facebook this week in which one of my clergy colleagues noted the best way not to preach heresy on Trinity Sunday was to say absolutely nothing and show pictures of kittens instead. <laughs> the point is that even those of us who have some sort of theological training struggle with the idea of the Trinity. But, at the risk of being branded a heretic, I'm going to plow ahead and try my best to offer some sort of explanation. So this text was chosen by the folks who compiled the Revised Common Lectionary because it does attempt to explain God in three persons. I'm not sure they were totally successful, to be honest. And people much more learned than myself have de been debating the nature of God for centuries. Now, it's interesting to note that the word Trinity doesn't appear anywhere in the Bible. And that whole concept of the Trinity wasn't finalized until 325 A.D. by the First Council of Nicaea, and only after many, many, many years of debate. Now, if you've ever served on a committee tasked with making any sort of decision, you'll understand the challenge that the folks at Nicaea must have faced. Different viewpoints and perspectives, differently, I'm sorry, different deeply held beliefs and customs always have to be reconciled in such a way that the final decision is somehow acceptable to all parties involved. And the final decision is never going to please everyone. The phrase designed by committee comes to mind, and we all know that that's not a compliment. The final product produced by the First Council of Nicaea was, of course, the Nicene Creed, which we recited this morning. While the Nicene Creed was an attempt to somehow define the nature of God and has become one of the foundational expressions of the universal Christian church, we have to acknowledge that the writers were flawed human beings and they were just attempting to do what really is impossible. I can imagine after years of debate, the, the men of the council, and they were all men, finally must have thrown up their hands and said, enough, we've done the best we can. Where's the aspirin? Because we have killer headaches. <laughs> when I find myself having to deal with a passage of scripture I find particularly dense, I have a couple of choices. I can either ignore it entirely, which may seem like I'm chickening out, or I can find one or two verses or concepts and build from there. Thanks to the Tuesday night Bible study, I've chosen the latter, so unfortunately I won't be showing you all cute pictures of kittens, unless you want to see some doing fellowship, because I do have some on my phone. Instead, today I've decided to focus on verse 12. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. And as a side note, in the Amplified translation of the Bible, which we were looking at on Tuesday night, the word bear was changed to understand, which I think is a much more, not softer, but a much easier word to, to take in. So it seems like Jesus, in this verse, is calling the disciples stupid. And when I first heard this passage read many years ago, that was the first thing that came to my mind. That's not what Jesus meant, of course, and I think Jesus may have been showing some grace and kindness to the disciples. 
I can imagine him saying, look, y'all, I've given you a lot to think about, but I haven't shared everything because I don't want to overwhelm you. Just wait, because the spirit of truth is coming and will declare to you the things that are to come. So looking at it in that context, is it possible that the true nature of the Trinity is one of those things that hasn't been fully revealed yet? So one of the requirements for anybody seeking to be a pastor in the Presbyterian Church is to write a statement of faith. And the purpose of such a document is to clearly define one's faith in such a way that those who read it know exactly where a person stands theologically. Having sat on committees where candidates are examined as to their suitability for ministry, I can tell you that statements of faith are a critical part of the process. And the formula is pretty simple, actually. The writer shares their understanding of what baptism and communion means in a Presbyterian context. They share their belief in the Trinity, as well as their personal understanding of what the Trinity actually is. Most churches looking for a pastor will require a potential candidate to submit a statement of faith as part of the application process because it's a quick and easy way to see if the views of a candidate and a congregation line up. When I first started writing my own statement of faith, I was in a place in my life where I struggled to find words to express my views regarding the Trinity. Being raised LDS, I had always been taught that it was Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, period, end of story. And I took it for granted that the Trinity was male. It was what it was, and for a good portion of my life, I didn't give it any more thought than that. After I left the LDS church, I started being exposed to different understandings of what God potentially could be like. At first, I struggled and argued against any other way of seeing God. Even though I was no longer LDS, I simply couldn't let go of how I had been taught to think about God. It just seemed incomprehensible to me that there could be another way. I think the shift happened for me, though, when I started hearing stories from friends who had been abused by their fathers, and how they continued to struggle to use male pronouns to describe God. These conversations were heartfelt and painful. My friends really wanted to believe in God, but referring to God as Father, especially given their history with their own fathers, had become a barrier. As I started thinking about my own statement of faith and after having engaged in many of these types of conversations, I started wondering if perhaps God might be bigger than my own feeble attempts to define who exactly God is. I think it's only natural for us to want clarity and easy answers, and sometimes it works that way, but sometimes it doesn't. It's taken years, but personally, I've come to understand that God doesn't just sit on God's throne in heaven, separate and apart from all of creation, but that God is in all, through all, and around all. God, as I see God, is bigger than all of our attempts to define and categorize what God is. What that means for me is that God transcends our traditional view of gender. Now let me say this, if you all have a traditional view of God as Father, and that brings you comfort and helps you be a better person or better Christian, that's great. I have no problem with that. I would encourage all of us, though, to listen to the spirit of truth and remain open to the possibility that God is more than what we may think God is. In our attempt to find an easy answer to the question of God's nature, is it possible that we might be putting God in a box? And if we are putting God in a box, 
aren't we limiting how God can work in us and through us? Now I'll note here for the record that I could be dead wrong about all of this. The point here is that none of us really know the answer when it comes to the true nature of God. It remains a mystery that only time will be able to resolve for us. Here's the thing. While we don't fully grasp the true nature of the God who we worship and adore, that doesn't mean there won't come a time when our understanding of God is expanded. That will happen if we listen to the Spirit of Truth who will guide us in all truth and declare to us those things which are to come. Now imagine some of you would have preferred that I had not said anything about the nature of God. Some of you may have just preferred me to shut up and show you pictures of kittens. I get that. I really do. But here's the thing. And let me say this. As a preacher, I believe my job is to comfort the afflicted and maybe to afflict the comfortable a bit. If you are uncomfortable with the notion that God might be something more than the traditional definition we all grew up with, I invite you to ask yourself why. Why are you uncomfortable? Is it because we prefer, we prefer to believe in a God who looks like us or thinks like us? And if God looks just like us and thinks just like us, if God has the same biases and prejudices as we do, doesn't that mean that we've just created God in our own image instead of being created in, in God's image? Last week I mentioned the concept of in essentials unity, in non-essentials liberty, and in all things charity. For me, the belief in the triune God is essential to my Christian faith. Whether or not the triune God is male or female, some combination of both or something completely beyond gender, for me, that falls into the category of non-essentials. The mystery of God's true nature is less important to me than following God's word and living a life in accordance to God's will. Someday, when God feels that we're ready to understand who God truly is, the Spirit of Truth will let us know. Until that day comes, until the mystery is solved, may we simply praise and glorify the God who created us all and continue the work God has called each and every one of us to do. Amen. I will invite the ushers to come forward at this time for the morning offering. Let's pray. Holy God, we return a portion of your bounty to you for the furtherance of your kingdom in this place and in the world. We pray with gratitude in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. Please remain standing and join us in, number, in hymn number two, Come Thou Almighty King. Sisters and brothers, it doesn't matter how we envision God. All of our words to describe God will always fall short. Our job is to go out in the world and be God's hands and feet, carrying the good news of the gospel to everyone we come in contact with. And may God watch between me and thee while we're absent, one from another, and all God's people said, Alleluia. Amen.